Welcome back. We're still playing uh, Kerbal Space Program. This is the continuation of the tutorial of C7 Studios Flight Pack. Let's get in here. Let's do this. Go to the Vehicle Assembly Building. I'm going to start again with this the basic C7 cockpit here. Which I really like it. I think it looks nifty. Okay, what I want to do here with, with this one, um, we're going to uh, illustrate and demonstrate how to how to construct and fly a, a basic airplane using what we call the Mark II holes, these uh, fuselage parts which are uh, slightly larger. So here, yeah, first we start with this cockpit. Now we've got over here, uh, it's kind of an adapter part because give ourselves one of those immediately after this over here what do I have this over here the labeled mark 2 c7 RCS tank mark 2 this design we're eventually going to be doing stuff with RCS stuff so I want to have two RCS tanks because I expect we're gonna be burning through it after those RCS tanks over here in command control SAS mark 2 light boom there we go. Okay, so yeah, this this airplane is going to be a little more advanced last month than the previous. It's going to have additional capabilities built into it. Okay, now we're over here. The this basic Mark II hole. The airframe fuselage features the latest re-entry survivability. Hey, that sounds good. I want to have three of those in a row. Yeah, this, this airplane is going to be significantly larger than previous. I actually, I'm having to kind of go uh, contrary to my, to my own natural instincts. I kind of like small airplanes, but those tend not to be very stable. And the end of the whole, the whole goal of this project is to make, um, make C7 spacecraft, space planes that are easy to fly, easy to build, easy to fly. So, and easy to fly, that usually means stability. Stability comes from, uh, you know, more length, more breadth, you know, more length. Of, the longer it is, then the, usually the more stable it will be in pitch, and the, 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 the wider your wingspan, then the more stable it will be in roll. Yeah, we'll put all the tail fins on it. Yeah, it'll be good. Okay, enough rambling. What is this thing over here? Uh, here with this adapter part. Put one of those on there. And, of course, our basic C7 engine on the back. Uh, on this one, I'm really not going to play around with, with the Mark III holes. I'll, I mean, you'll see what we have. You can put another adapter on there and then go over here to these, uh, the Mark III and, 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 oops, hang on, hang on. See it from the side, and then that makes it even bigger. Uh, you know, if you're for your large behemoth space shuttle size designs, uh, you can have some fun playing with it. There's a whole bunch of options in this pack, which I'm not going to get around to. I'm, I'm not actually doing that in this one. But it, it's, it works. It's pretty much the same thing, you know. As long as we could get this one working, yeah, you can get you can get a space plane a space plane working with the the Mark III hole, no problem. Kind of the same deal. We've got several of these other like a uh, bunch of these smaller wings, which are good for the the smaller space planes. But again, those the Smaller, they're kind of they're little sports cars, little sports car space planes. Slightly more difficult to handle. I'm not really going to get into those in this tutorial. Okay, so the wing design. Uh, the wing design for this vehicle, uh, we're going to continue with what worked out just fine with the first one, having the, the delta wing in back and the canards up front. I believe I'm going to put my canards up here front first uh, you notice I'm not just using these um, uh, the the designated controllable canards here they're not quite large enough for all the the control and lift I'm going to need for this larger airframe I have the two-way symmetry turned on because these are not actually control surfaces themselves okay so I'm actually going to use the Delta wing as a canard now I'm going to turn the symmetry off and go over here and pick up um, these control surfaces. And these, I want the symmetry turned off because canards work better when they're used as elevators. 
I want both of these control surfaces to move in the same direction. All right, turn to a symmetry back on. And, okay, we're our vaguely wing-shaped board, or rectangles. All right, go over here, zoom in just a little bit. I'm gonna line the back edge up with that adapter, the sloped edge of that adapter, like that one. And I'll put another one in front of it so it butts up against the back one. And one more time, three times. These guys, get that all lined up just perfect like that. Okay. Now our triangles to smooth out this delta wing. Still symmetry turned on. Another triangle here. It's a triangle. Come on, get in there. It's arguing with me a little bit. Yeah, that works. And I'm going to go back to standard delta configuration wings again. Oops. Line that up in the back edge. Yep. Yep, looking pretty. Pretty similar to the previous design, ain't it? But just kind of larger, beefier. All right, I need me some ailerons. So here we go. Flight surface, two-way symmetry turned on for these guys so that whenever I roll, one will move up and the other one will move down. Okay. So now, next step, uh, I need to have some a tail fin on this thing. Vertical stabilizer, actually, what that's called. Tail fin is good enough. Uh, let's turn symmetry off. And, in, again, because this one's larger, I'm thinking that this, um, our official tail fin part isn't quite as large as what I want out of this thing. Uh, so, I'm actually going to get the standard Delta configuration wings, but one of my very favorite parts and multi-use can use, use all kinds of things in this pack. Line that back edge up there. One of those, okay. And, while I'm here... Again, got this standard all-purpose control surface here. And let's put a rudder on this thing. Uh, some of the flight testing that I was doing earlier, I didn't think that this was quite as stable as I wanted, just with even, even with this single massive vertical stabilizer, the tail fin. Here's what I think will work. Come over here and grab the all-purpose triangle again. I'm going to put uh, two of these right next right next to the vertical stabilizer okay about like that is that symmetrical looks symmetrical to me uh, the way I was evaluating like how how much how many tail fins I want see whenever I start flying the thing I, I like to see that the um, on the nav ball the 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 direction of travel is is lined up that the, the, the marker on the nav ball is, whenever I turn, remains aligned with the, the marker for direction of travel without having to use a whole lot of rudder. That's, that's evidence that the, that the tail fin is doing its job and that the airplane is not slipping and skidding through the turns. Okay, wheels. The airplane's gotta have wheels. Gear C, put it up there up front in the middle. And one over here. I'll tell you what, let's try and put that so the post is right at the junction of all these parts here. I bet you that'll be pretty strong. And duplicate it with this one on the other side. Yep, pretty close to symmetrical. Doesn't have to be perfect. Now, I've got these RCS tanks on here, and you'd be um, you'd very reasonably might think that I'd be doing something with the uh, uh, RCS thruster ports on there. I'm not going to do those yet. That That's the subject for another tutorial. It's like the next chapter in the tutorial. I want to demonstrate first that this aircraft will fly. It will handle just fine. 
uh, without needing to add any RCS parts, any any uh, RCS thrusters. So, yeah, I guess I guess the the tanks are kind of dead weight right now, but yeah, we'll get back to those later. <laughs> okay, uh, let me see. This one is Trainer Two. It's a second one in the series, and it's using the Mark II hole. So there we go. Let's save it and let's launch it. Here we are. Throttle up, 100, and let's go. Yeah, see, it's, you can see it's slightly more sluggish getting off of the launch pad, but it could accelerate just fine. I think this one needs a little more throttle than the previous design. Say, say half throttle to two-thirds throttle is it where it usually responds best. Okay, see, it's larger, it's uh, more massive, and it's got the wider wingspan. When you're, when you're flying this around, you'll, you'll notice that it's um, slightly more sluggish on the controls. It's, it's more, more placid. Um, you know, it rolls, but it, it just kind of takes its own time. So, even though if you're looking for something to, to, to practice learning to fly, learning to pilot one of these, um, these are qualities that you're actually looking for and that, you know, it's whenever you, you know, make a, a control movement, it, it'll, the airplane will respond in a, a slow, smooth, measured, controlled fashion. You can tell I'm a big fan of these whole Delta Wing and Canard designs. There's, there's lots of different ways that you can configure an airplane, but I just really like these. <laughs> and of course, for the, for the goal here to make a tutorial for somebody beginning, it's it does have a tendency to make it very stable, so that's that's good for is a good design for our purpose here. All right, let's land this thing. Again, I'm not worrying too hard about the runway, especially. Uh, because I have not gone in and manually edited the craft file to make it symmetrical, as, as I slow down, uh, this you'll see this thing, it probably will pull to one side or the other. Uh, that and the, the runway, it's very short. It's, it's, I think landing on the runway, is, it's just more trouble than it's worth. That, you can do that for like prestige points later. Right now I just want to demonstrate that this thing will get on the ground and we'll get back off the ground in one piece. Because uh, it's Heavier. Uh, this airplane will tend to 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 land a slightly s faster speed than the previous design. And usually, if I want to get it down to say about 40 meters per second, that's about right. The other one I could get it below 30 pretty reliably. This one, to see, I'm having to hold down the pitch almost constantly now and gently allow it to contact the ground. Oh, my wing broke. Hello. Okay, maybe putting with that landing gear where I did was a was a bad idea, huh? <laughs> it wouldn't be Kerbal Space Program if something didn't go wrong. <laughs> oh, the other wing broke too. Okay, I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna change. <laughs> All right, time out. I'm gonna have to have to change that change the landing gear. All right. <laughs> 